Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Bork, and a special thanks to those of you that have subscribed this far. Please continue to subscribe down below on the easy to use sub button or the easy to use widget up above at the end of the video. So let's get right into it as we're going to preview our Lehigh Valley Phantoms versus the Hartford Wolf Pack. Well, Phantoms, of course, have had a very odd schedule this year because of the breakups in the schedule due to COVID-19 still affecting the world and every sports league out there, even though the NBA, I read, was like 95% vaccinated and the AHL and NHL only have a select one or two that are not, but it's still affecting as well as the ECHL AA level. But the Phantoms so far and so good um, are on track to play the Hartford Wolf Pack ten, or excuse me, twelve four two and one as they are one of the most dangerous. The Rangers team, one of the most dangerous in the AHL, as our Lehigh Valley Phantoms are starting to turn the tide after beating the Wolf Pack at home in a shootout, and of course beating the Cleveland Monsters last weekend, coming into playing the Wolf Pack. In a home and home that is just a very spaced out home and home at that. So obviously, if we can play a similar style, uh, maybe a little bit cleaner, so you don't have to go to a shootout. I freaking hate shootouts, <laughs> but um, if you can play a clean style, we can play more how we've been carrying the puck into the zone. I didn't look look at it this way when we first fired AV and T Michelle Terrian, but like, I think when Fletcher had the press conference and talked about like accountability and everything. And, and obviously more than that, but I think that more had a trickle-down effect than I thought it would initially have, where it seems like the guys down below are like, well, crap, we don't have, obviously, the guy here that was looking at us before. We now have new people, even though he was here. It's Yo is the head man now. How does he evaluate us going forward? Like, they, the, you saw a step-up pace level. I don't know if it was connected, but it, but it was coincidental if it wasn't, because when they got let go. You saw a really step up pace level, better entries into the offensive zone by the Phantoms against the Cleveland Monsters and the Hartford Wolfpack on Sunday to be able to draw to the four goals in back-to-back -back games. Now what they have to do is protect the goaltender a little bit better, play better concise game in front of their net, and then still have that drive force of the offense. But it's a building force because we're, we're at five wins now. This Phantom team was struggling mightily because of people that were just wrecked out of the lineup injury-wise, obviously, and also due to the fact that we had so many people <clears throat> um, go up to the Philadelphia Flyers because of their injuries as well. So that made a big impact, having guys go up. Some of the bigger players on the team are up right now, and Morgan Frost, Max Wilman, and even Jackson Cates, who plays a very good penalty kill game for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, and adds a little bit of, of uh, jazz on offense as well. So, I mean, the Phantoms, obviously, we know they're a better team than what they put out on the ice this far, um, record-wise, and it's something that the, it's a tough recovery to get all the way back to where you want to get to, which is the Calder playoff. But can this team recover to being like Bruce Boudreaux said when he came into the Canucks? It looked like they might recover to get to the damn playoffs. But like, can they be a team that now plays a better winning hockey style going forward with Lappy, where it seems like it's taken him till last weekend to kind of get going? We, we looked a little bit better in the 5-3 loss against Charlotte as well. But to kind of get the game plan in style and become not just the developer where you see the young guys like the Wilmans, the Cates of the world, the Frost figuring it out, Ratcliffe, I think, I don't care what other people say, I think he from injuries is coming back looking better, Rupesar from injuries is coming back and looking better, um, but... It, you, you have those guys playing better as the young guys, but it seems like systematically pushing the right buttons, telling guys like how to go to the right spots, implementing the right system, and not just doing too many dump and chase like they were doing at the big league level uh, before AV got axed. I think that's starting to trickle down now, and it's going to be a good thing if it continues, because if, it, if I see us going back to lazy offense tonight, I'm going to be very pissed off. I don't see that happening, because I see the Phantoms playing a much better offensive game. Now it's just about getting better in front of Sandstrom or Pat Nagel, because I could see them going with Pat Nagel since it's on the road tonight, and then you would have Felix Sandstrom go at home against the Rochester Americans, who are also one of the AHL's better teams at 13-8, and eight, the Sabres minor league affiliate. Um, but when it comes to key players to watch, I'm um, on the Hartford Wolfpack. Morgan Barron's a very dangerous player uh, on their team. Uh, also Brzezinski, John Brzezinski. Very dangerous player. Gettinger is a very dangerous player. Timmy Gettinger, 
And then, of course, on the right wing, you have to watch Anthony Greco. He can fly down the ice. You have to be able to keep pace with him. So those would be my three players to watch for the Wolfpack heading into tonight's game. For the Phantoms, I think, obviously, if Millman plays a Tonight, that's going to be a player to watch. It'll be his first game back up, so it'll be nice to see Mason Millman back in the lineup. Not sure if he will be in, but if he is in, that's a for sure player to watch. Jerry Mayhew, for me, with the sniper-type level of player he is, he's always a player to watch. And Raddy looking better. Isaac Ratcliffe, he has to be on my player to watch board. Roy was looking better last game. Then Hodgson, when he plays, is always because of his tough. He's like the Brendan, other Brendan Sonny from the right side. Sonny, of course, shoots from the left side. They both are obviously those just nice throwback fun players. I still love having the the fighting and um, pounding, checking grit in the game, and those guys provide that, so I love watching those two. But that will be the preview for tonight's game, where now, to just solidify it, uh, we'll go over real quick uh, the goals for and goals against. 52 goals for, 70 goals against for the Phantom, 64 goals for for Hartford, 49 goals against uh, for the Wolfpack. And their goal differential is a positive 15 to a minus 18. So obviously the fans are looking to get that up and be more disciplined. 281 penalty minutes to under 200 at 183. Uh, last 10 is 6-2, 1-1 for Hartford, 2-5-2-1 and one for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. So if they can beat Hartford in back-to-back games, that's a hell of a back-to-back game stretch. I would think you would go with Pat Nagel, being you're on the road coming home to play Rochester tomorrow, but we'll have to see what happens and what squares off tonight. But this has been a preview to the Lehigh Valley Phantoms versus the Hartford Wolfpack. I hope everybody has a great, safe, and pleasant day and enjoys the game tonight on AHL TV or on the radio. Peace out, everybody.